ask. We answer. As Election Day approaches, we know you have questions. Voter registration, absentee ballots, where and when to vote. Expect more from Fox 61 News. Today on The Real Story, we are in the final days of election 2020. It's a choice between a Trump boom or a Biden lockdown. The presidential race at a fever pitch. We choose hope over fear, unity over division. Connecticut's congressional seats also up for grabs and the balance of the state legislature in your hands. We are going to have a secure election in Connecticut that is going to count every ballot. This morning, Secretary of the State Denise Merrill, U.S. Senator Chris Murphy, and Connecticut's Republican Party Chair J.R. Romano break down the election and what's at stake. Plus, we take a close look at the race in Connecticut's 5th Congressional District. Congresswoman Johanna Hayes joins us, followed by Republican and former federal prosecutor David X. Sullivan. This is The Real Story, election special with Jen Bernstein. Good morning and thanks for joining us for this special election edition of The Real Story. I'm Jen Bernstein. Just two days from now, polls will open in our state. But because of the pandemic, nothing is business as usual. Already, more than 500,000 absentee ballots have been sent in. It will be a large task for cities and towns to tally those ballots and welcome voters on Election Day. We're expecting participation in general with this election to be sky high. So it's only appropriate to start off our election special with Connecticut's chief election official, Secretary of the State, Denise Merrill. Thanks for being here this morning. My pleasure. <laughs> All right, so more than 500,000 absentee ballots, that's pretty incredible. Uh, how is your team and cities and towns across the state handling the processing of those right now? Well, thanks to a federal grant, which I think our delegation fought hard to get for us, uh, we have been able to provide funding to the towns to cover what are inordinately high extra expenses this year. Uh, they have had to hire on a lot of help both in the town clerk's office and in the registrar's office for election day itself. And we've had to provide, you know, all the protective gear for the uh, polling places. We have had to secure our cybersecurity uh, defenses. There's been a lot of talk about what's going on with our cybersecurity and possible hacking into uh, various systems. So we've had our hands full. I really think the uh, local officials, I can't say enough about how they have risen to the occasion. I think we were all a little freaked out at first, uh, but uh, I think we're gonna be able to manage it. I think people have to have a little bit of patience. This is an extraordinary situation. So uh, we're doing what we can to make it a great election day for everyone. We know that the new absentee ballot law was passed, obvious law now, but it was a bill that was passed. It allows uh, absentee talliers to kind of open the outer envelope, right? Your ballot is in a second envelope. I know you have explained that will not be open until election day. What are you hearing from towns and cities about the sorting and taking out of the first envelope? Is it going to help? Uh, I think it helps in some cases where they have an extremely large number of absentee ballots. For example, a place like West Hartford might want to do that. Uh, some registrars say it doesn't really do that much to speed things up. We did also allow them to start counting at 6 a.m. on Election Day uh, rather than the typical 10 a.m., so that should help as well. Uh, but, you know, we only count ballots, actually count ballots, on election day. And I think that will still remain uh, the case for everyone. And then how long it takes after that to keep counting, uh, we're not sure. What are you expecting for turnout at the polls? I mean, this is such an unusual year. Are people gonna still turn out in the numbers that you would normally see for the presidential election? You know, I have, we have no history with this sort of thing. I mean, traditionally only about five to 8% of people vote absentee ballot. So of course, uh, what we've done in Connecticut is we have not collapsed polling places. I think we learned that from some of the things we saw in other states and other cities where they just figured, oh, everybody's gonna vote absentee. So they didn't have as many polling places and that turned out to be quite disastrous actually. Uh, so we won't have that, but I do think it's going to be a very high turnout election. Um, 
typically in a presidential election in Connecticut, well, like in 2016, we had about 75% of the registered voters actually voted. Uh, and I think it might be higher than that. But don't bear in mind, we have an all time high number of people registered to vote this year, 2.3 million and still coming in. Uh, so that's, that's another factor. Um, hard to guess how this is all going to work out. I've talked to people that said, well, I got an absentee ballot, but I'm going to wait to the last minute and see if I want to do that or if I want to go to the polls in person. I think there's a lot of people in that category. You, I, I was listening to something that said that you had said it's because of a surge of new voters. Or sorry, younger, was it younger voters? Yes, there's younger a voters. very large number of 18 to 24 year old voters, many more than we usually have. Uh, so that's that's encouraging. I mean, we've been talking about this for years, but I, I do think this year you're going to see a big number of younger voters for the first time. Going to the polls, uh, obviously you are dealing with a pandemic. What are people's rights? Because you run into the issue of the constitutional right for people to vote and the ask that you wear a mask. If someone refuses to wear a mask at these polling places, what's going to happen? Well, I mean, it's a tricky question because, of course, we will not allow anyone to endanger anyone else's health. And there could be lines at the polls and people will be asked to stand six feet apart. They will also be asked to wear a mask and there will be extra masks there in case someone forgot theirs. But if someone actually absolutely insists that they will not wear a mask, but they still want their right to vote, we will make other accommodations for that person. Uh, for example, there are several options and it would depend on the polling place as to which one they choose. Uh, but the moderator at the polling place can, uh, can offer to bring the ballot out to the person outside or can arrange to have a special separate place for that person to vote. Uh, but they will not be allowed to be in the polling place with people without a mask because that really violates the, the CDC standards and the uh, executive orders from the governor. I want to talk about uh, the possibility of fraud during the election. I know you've been very outspoken that our elections are safe here in Connecticut. They're done at the local level. I remember back in 2016, you all had said that a foreign actor had tried to uh, test the firewall of our voter rolls, not vote votes, but like where the voter information is, your address, possibly your social security number, that kind of stuff. And then you later found out from the federal government that it was Russia who was doing that. We know that the federal government is saying that Russia and Iran have tried to do something similar. Have you detected any of that kind of action against our firewalls again this election cycle? Uh, we're working actively with the FBI and the National uh, Homeland Security agencies. Um, there, it is an ongoing situation, and I do believe that Connecticut is part of that. Um, I think it's almost uh, routine now. Uh, we get hits on our uh, database, which is basically the voter registry. As you say, it's not where you vote. Our, our tabulators, where you actually put the ballot in the machine, are not online. We have paper ballots, so I don't want anyone to think that their vote would be compromised. But um, we think that they're just trying to create a lot of mistrust in the election. And yes, we have seen ongoing efforts. There's a massive campaign of disinformation going on. Uh, I'm on, as I say, a national committee in secure briefings where we're told about the kind of activity that's going on. Nothing has breached our firewalls. Um, there is a kind of needle in the haystack sort of sense about these things. We get, I'm told, about a million hits a day on our database, as do all other state systems. So it's, it's kind of hard to tell where they're coming from. Um, and they've gotten smarter about these things, but it is definitely still going on. We are working very hard to make sure that our systems are secure and safe. All right, Secretary of the State Denise Merrill, thank you. We will be speaking with you several times on Election Day as well as Election Night here at Fox 61. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much, Jen. All right, now is a good time to let you know of a great resource we have at Fox 61. Text the word vote to 860-527-6161 and we will text you back with a link to the Fox 61 voter guide. We have information on absentee ballots, voting at the polls and more. Again, text the word vote to 860-527-6161. Check it out.
All right, we've got a full show for you on The Real Story election special. Up next, someone who has a front seat to Washington politics, Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy. Stay with us.